hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, how are you? Uh, I'm hungry because uh, I was nervous and I didn't want to eat. Uh, yeah. So uh, my presentation is about uh, machine learning, linear algebra, um, NumPy, uh, a little bit of uh, TensorFlow, uh, just one example. Um, yeah, some, I will try to connect all of this. Um, yeah, uh, the idea is like quite complex, what I want to express. So let's start. Uh, yeah, I will try to say my motivations uh, at the beginning and also in the conclusions. Uh, I will talk about vectors uh, in the linear algebra sense and also with NumPy. And we will explore some simple examples. Uh, okay. Uh, as we know, uh, in order to understand very well machine learning, we need to know linear algebra. But also we need to know calculus, probability, and statistics. Um, uh, usually we find, uh, and mainly in the last years, this kind of uh, tutorials uh, from zero to here or do it in 30 days. Um, I'm not totally agree with these uh, tutorials, at least that you are a mathematician or physician. But uh, too many people that is entering into data science, uh, we have a background on software development. So in my case, uh, I prefer to go for the hard path, um, learn uh, or enforce my skills in this uh, mathematics, uh, in mathematics. Mm, yeah, it's only my opinion. Um, why? Because uh, usually uh, the good data science positions uh, are gotten by mathematicians or physicians, and I share that. Um, so I want to get a uh, good position in the future, not only this guy who is doing data parsing, or the, the struggling with data, but yeah, the kind of guy who can read a paper and implement it. So uh, I did a start uh, some time ago. Um, I did a start doing code like this. Uh, this is real, I mean, it's in my GitHub. Um, actually, it's not Python, it's R. And you can see that there, there are two for loops and also some bad indexing. Um, yeah, I did start uh, doing uh, machine learning, let's say, uh, coding in these styles. Because I didn't know too much about vectorization. So for example, uh, in order to create a, a matrix, a distance matrix, uh, I was uh, looping around three, three fourths. So yeah, when I rediscovered how to do this uh, using vectorized code, I was almost crying because it was uh, an elegant solution and it was not precisely this kind of automatically solution. Uh, so yeah, uh, I did start doing that. Um, so well, let's jump on the concept of vectors. Uh, well, doesn't matter that much, but uh, we will find uh, different notations sometimes with an arrow or in bold style. But actually what it matters is that a vector is only a collection of numbers. Um, we can 
have some operations that are important and that, in my opinion, we need to memorize. Uh, not memorize, but uh, internalize, because they become, they can become useful uh, when you are solving uh, a new problem. Uh, so for example, this length, uh, the length of a vector is actually very similar to, or it's not very similar, but it is uh, the Euclidean distance. Um, yeah, uh, also we can uh, have, we have this formula, uh, the distance between vectors. Um, yeah, they are still similar. Um, an important one, uh, the dot product. Um, if you see here uh, below, uh, the dot product of a vector itself, it is actually uh, the length of the vector, but squared. Uh, so yeah, let's do something more Pythonic. Mm, can you see the fonts? Yeah. Much better? No. Over there. One more. Okay, maybe one more. Yeah. Mm, okay, let's see. Yep. So this is just a stupid visualization. But uh, we can do uh, something else. Uh, we can draw the very basic example. Uh, I mean, the three, four, five example, um, the Euclidean one. Um, okay, uh, let's imagine that um, we have one vector going from the origin to here. Um, from here. Ooh. Um, yeah. Me too. No. Mm. Mm. Oh no. What I did. <laughs> mm. Okay. Oops. Yeah. 
Андрей. Замечательно. Yeah, that is the most basic example. So uh, it is good idea to think uh, in vectors, uh, doing this kind of visualizations. So uh, when we want to uh, calculate uh, the summation of these two vectors. It is easy to see that it will be, for, it will go from this arrow to this one. So in this case, is, uh, the length is three, and this side is four, and it will be five. So, um, yeah. But uh, that is very useful to internalize the formulas. But usually uh, in data science, uh, uh, we find uh, we find only scatter plots. So, but that is, uh, in my case, uh, useful to learn. Uh, it was useful to internalize the formulas, visualizing uh, the vectors in, as physician, and then just uh, think on the final of the vector as uh, the points. Mm, so yeah, in NumPy there are some functions to do these operations. Um, yeah, I didn't mention one before. Uh, I guess I did. Uh, so one important one is the the norm of uh, one operation is the norm. Um, with the norm, uh, as it is quite similar to the magnitude or, or the distance, we can actually get uh, those ones easily. So imagine that we have to use, or we only have this implemented. Um, mm -hmm. Oops. So this one is easy, which is the size of this vector B. Mm, do you want to say <laughs> something? Yeah, three. So yeah, this an issue one. Um, then. Uh, Let's uh, use this same norm to calculate uh, the distance between B and C. Mm -hmm. So we just need to do this. Mm, yeah. Mm, well, I was trying. Okay. Mm, well, this is becoming boring. <laughs> so let's go for one more example. Mm, but actually, uh, let me go back. Uh, you know that the winter is coming. I mean, the artificial intelligence winter. But uh, 
well, it's actually not coming. But uh, one curious uh, stuff is that in the past we already had some artificial intelligence winter, and then for some time, because of some paper published by Minsk, Minsky and Popper, the research was canceled uh, almost in a very important university. So for 15 years or so, uh, we didn't have research on neural networks. And that was called the artificial intelligence winter. Um, the people is saying that we will go for a second winter, but actually no. <laughs> but uh, what exactly these guys were uh, saying in, the, in this paper, uh, they claim that, uh, or they prove actually, that uh, it was not possible to solve of the sort problem with one perceptron. Because we know that the perceptrons work uh, in, they have a linear separator. But uh, actually uh, what I want to show today is that we can solve the sort problem using one neuron. And we will see this later. Yeah, with one perceptron, or more formally with one year. Um, yeah, um, also we will check some example on linear regression, just multiplying vectors and matrices. Um, yeah, let's do, well, this is the algebra behind uh, linear regression. And um, this is the one in, if we see uh, with this uh, summation symbol, but actually it's equivalent to this one uh, in the matrix form. Um, I don't want to uh, spend time, but you believe me because I am the speaker. Um, this is the solution. So actually, uh, we just need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven operations uh, with two, one matrices, one matrix and one array. Um, we will get the minimum value here, or, or one solution. And then this is pretty fun. Because, uh, yeah, if we don't know this, maybe we will go, or we will try to solve uh, the problem in this way, using for loops, as I did before. So yeah, uh, let me go for the code. So actually, uh, what I did, uh, the, I mean, the most important line is this one. Um, it's the same as this one. But this one is also important. Uh, we need to get the X or the data set, and we need to stack one column with only ones. This is because uh, we have this term here, the B, in, and it's, it has some one here, imaginary. Um, yeah, do you know these plots or this data set? Uh, it's, they are very interesting. Uh, Okay, let me run this. So uh, these plots or these mini data sets are used to show a correlation. Um, we can see that 
they are very different, but actually the line that is drawn is the same. So yeah, what I did is just uh, get uh, the X and Y, and then call the function here, this two, and I get the solution, the minimum, which is actually uh, nothing but uh, the intercept and the slope or the slope and the offset. Uh, but in matrix notation. Uh, yeah, um, it's working. So, but we can do it also this. You see in TensorFlow. Uh, which is good. Um, in this case, uh, we say in placeholders, uh, these two variables, the data set and the labels. Um, yeah, uh, this is not um, very elegant, should be more elegant. But actually, it's the same uh, operations as before. Uh, you see here, uh, this uh, matmul is uh, actually the multiplication between these two matrices. And it's nothing but the dot product, but with matrices. Um, yeah, uh, without using any uh, library or any function uh, for modeling in TensorFlow or NumPy, we can solve or we can implement a linear regression because we know uh, the linear algebra behind this. Um, yeah, it's working. <laughs> so here we get uh, the, we execute the session, the TensorFlow session, and then we get the minimization and just plot the line. Mm, then, uh, the next example. Uh, so do you think that it is possible to solve the SOAR problem using only one euro? Who? Well, I think so. So I want to show this. So I'm generating some random points. Uh, I mean, these points here are uh, just collocated in four squares, and then I populate um, with more points around these ones, and I get, I will get, yeah, this data set, just a sort of problem. We cannot solve this using one line. But we can solve this uh, using one euro. Uh, so usually in the literature, we use always uh, sigmoid functions. And the sigmoid functions, we know that they are monotonic. They are always from the bottom to the top. Um, but what if we use a non-monotonic function in the first term? Uh, for example, the cosine function. 
Um, this function is going up and down, and then we can solve this problem with one neuron. So here is the code uh, for the perceptron. I just modify the function uh, and also um, the unit step. I mean, I just did the subtraction here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, just run this. Oops, no. Oh, it's here. Uh, actually, I'm getting the data from some files. Yeah, this is the cosine function. But uh, we have, we can see the cosine function. Uh, we can imagine uh, as if we have seen seems uh, the since above. So you, you can see that here is maybe going down and he's going up. So let's run this again. Oh yeah, here. How many image? No, oh, let me try to run it again. Oh, no. Okay, this seems much better. So it's almost perfect since the beginning. So what we can see here is that these ones are correctly classified. And this one here, the blue ones, they are not classified in the border. And yeah, after three epochs, the classification is, is perfect. So, uh, what uh, else uh, we can learn um, in linear algebra uh, um, in order to, to have a solid background? Of course, uh, we should go for the gradient descent algorithm. That is uh, the algorithm that everyone is using nowadays, and it's very simple. Um, it's actually just uh, a lot of multiplication between matrices. Um, also, another concept that is uh, quite popular is the eigen decomposition, because the eigenvectors and eigenvalues are used uh, to implement PCA or LDA, uh, I mean dimensionality reduction. Um, another concern that we should uh, be aware of is uh, the numerical instabilities. Sometimes we are dealing with very, very big numbers or very, very big matrices or very small numbers. So we should uh, be careful uh, with the functions that we are using and check the documentation. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know, some good material to follow with this, at least in my case. Uh, I have been checking this, these ones. Um, they are very good. There is a specialization offered by Coursera with three courses to learn linear algebra, uh, statistics, I think so. Um, I don't remember the other one. But uh, yeah, it seems a very good uh, specialization. And this crazy guy, 
is offering uh, for free some course on YouTube. Uh, I guess you know this guy, right? Who knows him? Okay, uh, then it's good that you don't know him because this guy is amazing. He's like a comedian. Com he's doing comedy, but also teaching machine learning. And this series is uh, pretty, pretty nice. Um, another material, very, very formal. Uh, there is a chapter in the deep learning book. It is not like a good material, but it is a bullet list, so you can check uh, which topics do you need to learn. Um, yeah, that's all from my part. So, do you have questions you. Uh, or comments? We have time for questions. So there is, uh, you have some reference that you put at the end mm -hmm. uh, for books that people should read. Uh, what do you think is the hardest part when you being uh, self-teaching, when migrating from a more math background to more data science background? Uh, I should say that um, maybe a stake uh, constant because there are some concept, concepts that can be boring at the beginning or that you don't know why you are learning that but you need to learn it and then after some time you will realize that it was a useful concept mm, yeah okay well, anyone has questions Uh, could you share your uh, source code in a GitHub repository so everyone everyone could read it again and oh, uh, yeah, practice? I, I will put it in the the slides in the uh, EuroPython page. Oh, okay. And Thanks. then I will put the link there. Okay. Okay. So uh, I want to thank you, uh, the speaker, again.